This is the 12th uh, IB or AP chemistry for response question. This one's on equilibrium. This is a particle diagram question, so it's a good one for the new AP chem curriculum. Uh, I'm going to go through this in a second, but if you want to try the problem first, there is a link to the description, or there's a link in the description to the Google document that has this problem set up. So if you want to try it on your own before seeing the solution. Also, this particular problem is going to vary depending on who does it. So this is how I chose to do it. Uh, there would be other acceptable answers on this. Um, starting off, we're showing a particle diagram showing only nitrogen dioxide at the beginning. So we're starting with all reactant. And so NO2, I'm going to draw like this, where the nitrogen is this, the oxygen is that. Let's make a little P here. That's not confusing at all. So I'm going to start with a certain number of these NO2s just to kind of set up a consistency amongst all of my drawings that I do throughout the problem. So I'm going to start off with eight of these. If you start with a different number, that's okay. It's just, it's just you're going to have to kind of scale from that answer. Okay, so. particle diagram showing only the nitrogen dioxide. I have eight of them. I'm going to assume that my box here is one liter in size. Uh, and I'm also going to be assuming that every time I draw a molecule that that is one uh, mole of that particular molecule. So obviously I can't draw a mole of molecules on here. I'd be here all day. And I think I would break the computer or something. But uh, we, can, we can scale this up and say, okay, this is eight moles within one liter. So we have eight molar NO2 at that point. Okay. All right. So the second one says dry particle diagram showing only the, the dinitrogen tetroxide at the beginning. So if we keep our nitrogen and oxygen, uh, for me a dinitrogen tetroxide would look like this. And keeping with my scale from before, I'm going to keep the same amount of nitrogen and oxygen present at all times. So now instead of having eight of these, I'm going to have four because I have twice the amount of material in each one. So, so instead of NO2, I have N2O4. That's twice as much stuff, so I need half as many molecules to have all the nitrogen and oxygen atoms present. Uh, so here's an NO2, so to speak. Here's an NO2. It's dimerized. So I need half as many as before. Okay. And then in the last part, it says now draw an equilibrium mixture. And that gives you some leeway. It doesn't give you any restrictions on what your equilibrium mixture is going to look like or not look like. But again, I'm going to keep my numbers consistent. I'm going to make an NO2 and an NO2, NO2, and one more NO2. So I have four NO2s and two N2O4s at my equilibrium. And the next problem says, go ahead then and figure out uh, an ice chart for going from diagram one to three and from diagram two to three. And then go ahead and calculate the equilibrium constant. Okay. So here's my equilibrium mixture. So for the ice chart, We're going to have our two NO2s going through to make N2O4. And so for the diagrams one to three, the diagram one, I started with all NO2 and no N2O4. So I started with zero of this. Now I'm assuming I have a one volume, one liter volume. I'm also assuming each particle drawn was one mole. represents one mole. So I had eight of these, so I had eight molar NO2. But then at equilibrium, I had two of these in one liter, so that's two molar. And at equilibrium, I had four of these. Okay. Now to get from eight to four, I lost four in molarity. To get from zero to two, I gained two in molarity. And that's interesting because those two numbers are not the same. Uh, and also they have directionality applied. So the NO2 is decreasing in amount, 
and it's decreasing by twice the amount that the N2O4 increases. And that ratio comes from that balanced reaction. So this is a stoichiometry step. The stoichiometry limits how these two can change. As this changes, this changes by a proportional amount. And that proportionality is based off of that balanced reaction. Okay. So in the second one, we did experiments two to three for the same reaction. 2NO2 turns into, oh, it's a bad arrow, uh, N2O4. Uh, for our initial, we started with no reactant, and we started with four moles of product. And we had a change, and we ended up at equilibrium. So for part three, we ended up with two of these and four of these. Okay, so notice that in, in each case, we end up with the same equilibrium amounts. Okay, because we had the same number of things present, uh, we'll end up with the same ratios. We end up with the exact same kind of representation at equilibrium. To change, this changed by 4, and this decreased by 2. And so again, you can see the proportionality of the twice as much uh, reactant change as product change based on this balanced reaction. Okay, so if we flip back, the 4 and the 2, we are getting from this equilibrium mixture. We have 2 of these, we have 4 of those. That's what we're doing here. 2 of these, 4 of those, 2 of these, 4 of those. The initials, I've deleted, but if you want to go back to the video, you can find them. The initials are what I started with in the very first beginning of the problem, and what I started with in the second problem. And so we're starting with a all this and all that, and then we're going to an equilibrium where we have a dynamic equilibrium where these are turning back into these, this is turning back into these, these are turning into these at the same time. And those two rates are occurring at the same time, and so the amounts of these do not change as time progresses, or at least they don't do anything other than fluctuate. Okay? The very last part of this is to calculate an equilibrium constant. So our equilibrium expression for this particular reaction is going to be the concentration of N2O4 divided by the concentration of NO2 squared products over reactants. And our concentrations are here or here. Uh, so we're going to plug in 2 over 4 squared. So 2 over 16 is 1 over 8, which is 0.125. If we do a little bit of analysis here, that's close to 1. It's near 1. So we have some of reactant and some product present at equilibrium. It's not heavily shifted to one side or the other. Um, and it's slightly, ever so slightly, reactant phase. A little smaller than one. That's a really big stretch. We're dealing with eight molecules or six molecules here. Um, so, but it, you can see that there are more reactants present than, than products. You've got to be careful of squares and things of that nature for this. Um, but in this particular case, that does line up, and so it can be expanded to things that might make a little more safe assumption based on the separation you see. Okay.